Hey, what's up, Vinyl Community? My name's Dan. This is my first video ever for uh, Dan's Vinyl Channel. It's a very, very, very creative name. You know, I mean, because we talk about vinyl, my name's Dan, and it's a YouTube channel. I mean, how more creative can you get that Dan's Vinyl Channel? Anyway, thanks for <laughs> tuning in and checking this video out. Anyway, um, Rob Walker, Let the Music Play is doing his 100 subscriber contest. And um, I've been kind of a lurker in the, uh, not kind of, I have been a lurker in the vinyl community for quite some time on the YouTube. Um, so I thought I've been putting off making a video. Why not make the first video of this channel actually be one about, you know, why not let the first one be a contest entry? So little incentive there thank you rob walker for uh you know i mean if i don't win it's it's not a big deal but i mean it's it's just one of those things you got me you got me uh you got me going on my channel so uh thanks for thanks for giving the incentive to do that uh so uh show five albums give me five give me five contest so give me five albums you never shown before well um lucky me i've never shown one single album on on this youtube channel so everything uh, here is just going to be new. So I decided to, I just grabbed five that I uh, kind of have a, like a little interesting story about it or maybe not, but just, uh, interesting albums to me. Um, if the album itself isn't interesting, the, uh, the story behind it may be. So, um, the first one, very, very uninteresting album here, Bon Jovi's New Jersey, 1988, I mean, this thing is just chocked stupid with hits. Uh, Light Your Hands on Me, Bad Medicine, Born to Be My Baby, Living in Sin, um, I'll Be There for You. I mean, this whole album, this was just like, this was like hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. And if you grew up in uh, in the 80s and you knew that uh, this, he was all over MTV with these. Uh, so anyway, interesting album? No, not really particularly. It was on my list because I have a, a list of, uh, excuse me. I have a list of uh, 1988 albums that I had, like on cassette, 1988, um, that I'm trying to rebuild on vinyl, and um, this was one of them. I've only been into vinyl for about, I don't know, five years or so, uh, The back in the resurgence of vinyl, and um, there's been lulls. I'm on a, I'm definitely in a peak right now of, of like collecting, I've had my peaks and valleys. Um, so anyway, found this Bon Jovi at my local store, which I'm going to give him a shout out, uh, Jeff city in the groove records. You guys are awesome. Um, anyway, this was like seven 99, like they'll ever see this video. Um, this was seven 99. You're like, why are you, this is an uninteresting album. There's no story behind this, but there is, but there is, but there is, see this, this thing was stapled clear through. And when I mean clear through, I mean, it's through on the back. Um, on the inner sleeve, the picture sleeve, yeah, their bass player, I think his name is David. I think he's the bass player. I don't know, maybe a bigger Bon Jovi fan would let me know. But see, he's got staple moves on his chest. Yeah, that's not a necklace. That's not a necklace. No. Stapled clean through, guys, the vinyl itself. I'm not kidding. And I'm gonna. it might be hard to see on this, on this, uh, this webcam, but right here, you could see those vinyl marks went clean through the vinyl. I didn't know that when I bought it, but when I bought it, it was like seven bucks, and it was in great shape. I mean, it's a VG Plus Easy, um, and uh, the cover's not bad other than, you know, having a staple mark through. I've never bought a vinyl or seen a vinyl that had had a staple clear through the vinyl. Now, I have bought vinyl before that has been, like, hung on a wall, and you could tell. I have this amazing copy of the traveling woolberries um and that album was actually hung on somebody's wall and you can't even i mean it's it looks terrible but it plays absolutely phenomenal real weird but i've never actually seen a vinyl <laughs> record that uh was uh was stapled clean through and you know what i'm gonna mess with this just later i'm just gonna put this down here for a moment all right, next one. Um, got this from another local store, Hit Records in Columbia. Um, BXI. 
This is Boris and Ian Asbury from the cult. I told you I was in 80s stuff. I love Ian Asbury. I never really heard of Boris before, but it had Ian Asbury. I uh, pulled out my phone, you know, Amazon Music Unlimited that I had, and um, I listened to it, and I thought, well, i got to have this. It was 8 bucks, and it's an EP, and if you decide to get this, don't make the mistake I did and realize, do realize this is a 45 RPM record. Um, so there's no marking on it that says it's a 45 anywhere. So, um, you know, you don't get it until, you know, Ian Asbury starts singing. So, uh, and I thought, man, this is some doomy guitars, man. It's like super low tune. And then even like at 45 speed, it's still, it's still pretty low tune guitars. But Boris and Ian Asbury, man, what a great little EP here. There's a cover of Rain on here done by, I guess, Boris. I don't know Boris. I still haven't really looked up Boris. I've had this album for a few months, but still haven't looked him up. Um, back to In the Groove, Dollar Bin. Led Zeppelin 2, you're thinking, yeah, okay. Seen this a million times. Nothing special about this Led Zeppelin 2. I'm not a huge Led Zeppelin fan. I hate to say that. Um, I am a Greta Van Fleet fan, and I do like Led Zeppelin. I am a I am a Led Zeppelin fan. I'm just not a big Led Zeppelin fan. I think I burnt myself out on Houses of the Holy, Physical Graffiti, and Led Zeppelin Four when I was younger. Anyway, I bought this just to flip. I was I was like, look, in in just the shape that the cover's in, I could I could get more more than a dollar in trade on this somewhere. You know, I mean, because the gatefold was like near perfect. You know, I mean, everything looks really great. And I opened up the record on the inside. It actually had an original sleeve and everything. And I'm like, sweet. And I looked at the record. It was like a good plus. You could tell it was going to play through without skipping. Um, anyway, and I got it. And I looked at it and I just bought it. I didn't even think about it. I still would have bought it for a buck. But what was interesting was it was Led Zeppelin 1 on the inside. It wasn't Led Zeppelin 2. Bonus? I guess because I was going to buy Led Zeppelin 2 to flip on the way home. I'm asking my wife, like, read off the track list there. I might actually hold on to this one. And, you know, she's like, oh, it's got a whole lot of love, what is, what shouldn't be, Lemon Song, Heartbreaker, Live in Love, May Ramble On, Moby Dick. And I'm like, okay, I'm keeping this record. So when I got home, I was a little disappointed. But I had never really listened to Led Zeppelin 1. I know, how, how is that possible? I'm 43 years old. Um, but I hadn't, anyway, just a gem to me because I never really would have bought Led Zeppelin 1 ever. Um, I'd seen it a million times, but uh, yeah, great album. Actually, really good album. Okay, uh, third one here, another from In the Groove in Jeff City, Frozen Ghost. Now, I, this is just something that people don't talk about. It's that They're not like... The, the biggest, one of the biggest bands, they're a Canadian band. They're a Canadian three-piece, I believe. And um, I tell you what, my sister bought this cassette when I was a kid. I think she said they opened up for, like, they might have opened up for Kiss or something. I don't know. Say opened up for somebody in the 80s. She really liked them. She bought the uh, cassette, and um, she listened to one song on it. That was the, the first track, Should I See? And then I kind of took the tape over. And I listen to the whole thing, and I mean, side one of this is just, like, phenomenal. Should I see? Promises. Beware the mask. Yamaya. And uh, Love Like Fire. Great, great, uh, great album. The whole album is good, but that first, the first side, you know what I'm talking about when you got one of those albums. Anyway, uh, Frozen Ghost, self-titled. I want to say this is from 1987. Let me look here. Yeah, 1987. Um... Just a great sounding record, too. I mean, this is back when they were, like, they were at the peak of, like, vinyl production, you know? I mean, it was like everything was sounding so good. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's number four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's four. All right, so five, show me five. I don't know which one to show you here. I'm between two vast different albums here. But I don't want to break any of the contest rules for Rob Walker. So, I'm just going to have to pick one. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe it. Which one's funner? 
Let's go ahead and do the fun one. Okay, so uh, I got this from Planet Score Records in St. Louis. We went there. Um, great, great store. Great guys. Uh, if you guys are ever in uh, St. Louis, Planet Score, just just great, great people. Um, they've got a nice store. It's they have well stocked, tons of good metal stuff, which I'm a I'm a huge metal metalhead. Um, and they they just they're just good guys in there. And I saw this, and I had been looking for this for a long time. And it was the, it's the Popeye soundtrack. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. It's it's incredibly fun. Now, when I was a kid, you got to understand, I was a huge Robin Williams fan, right? Mork and Mindy, I had the suspenders, everything. You know, more calling Olsen, come in Olsen, whole thing. Complete Robin Williams junkie. Love Robin Williams. Love Shelley Duvall. Just loved this movie. As a kid, and I still love it. I mean, it's it's kind of terrible, but I I still love it. And the music, and, and I thought, man, the music on this on this is just incredible. Though the older I got, the the less I appreciated the movie, and more I appreciated the music. Well, I didn't know this. Harry Nielsen did the entire soundtrack, and you're like, mm, of course, Nielsen Schmielsen. It's it's so good. Uh, just every song on this on this thing. There's one actually that I that I don't remember being in the in the movie at all. It's called Didn't We? Didn't We? Didn't We? Didn't We? Wasn't in the movie at all. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Bill Barnacle's Lament. I don't even know who Bill Barnacle is, but uh, you know, just blow me down. One of my favorite songs. I am what I am. It's not easy being me. Captain of me own destiny. You know, great stuff. Just a fantastic record. I mean, this is just amazing stuff. Popeye, the soundtrack. And just for a bonus, the other one was going to be this one, which I'll talk I'll talk about this album <laughs> in another video. Okay? Anyway, I uh, just wanted to uh, say congratulations to Rob Walker for uh, for getting your 100 subscribers. And uh, this is my entry into your into your thing and my entry into the vinyl community so uh if you guys uh if you guys feel an inkling yeah go ahead and hit that subscribe button like the video whatever comment um uh, it would just be cool just to uh interact with with some uh fellow vinyl enthusiasts out there so uh this is dan's vinyl channel peace out you guys have a great one and uh you know have fun out there digging them records see you later bye